Today we'll be looking at the new cryptographic functions available in CockroachDB as of 23.2. These are encrypt and decrypt, encrypt and decrypt with an initialization vector, and gen random bytes. I'll spin up a CockroachDB version 23.2 cluster. I'll use demo for this because these are enterprise functions. We can see that the version I'm using is 23.2. I'll create a table. It will be a contrived customer table with a credit or debit card number with an additional column to store the initialization vector. I'll use two of the new cryptographic functions now. By using an initialization vector with a size of 32 bytes, I'm telling CockroachDB to use the 256-bit variant of AES. We'll have a look at initialization vectors of different sizes in a moment. With the result of this, I'll insert a value into the customer table using a canned ID, a canned email address. I'll encrypt a card number. This isn't a real card number. This has been taken from Agen and a key. This key will only be known to operators of CockroachDB and should remain secret. We'll store the initialization vector that we generated above and we'll use the AES advanced encryption standard. With that inserted, let's have a look at the data. We have the canned ID and email address that I generated the encrypted card number and the initialization vector. The initialization vector isn't secret, but it does provide randomness to the output of the cryptographic function. If you're always using the same encryption key, you should definitely generate sufficiently random initialization vectors every time you encrypt new information. The data can be decrypted before being selected out. Let's say we want to make a payment on behalf of the customer. I can use the decrypt with initialization vector function, passing in the encrypted card number, the stored initialization vector that we generated at the point of encryption, along with the key that we used to perform the encryption in the first place. That will return a decrypted card number that we can then use in our checkout flow. There's the decrypted card number. The AES variant to use will be determined by the number of bytes we provide as an initialization vector. Let's see what various sizes of initialization vector look like. I'll encrypt the same card number three times, once with the 128-bit variant, once with the 192-bit variant, and once with the 256-bit variant. We can see that the card numbers are still all the same size. The size of the initialization vector doesn't impact the length of the ciphertext, but what does change is the size of the initialization vector and underneath the block size that's used by AES. That's the 128-bit variant, that's the 192-bit variant, and that's the 256-bit variant. Now I'll run a practical example. To do this, I'll create a simple Go application that will read a database URL and an encryption key from the environment. It will connect to CockroachDB and it will expose two endpoints, one to register a customer and one to perform a checkout operation. The register request will take an email address and a card number and it will encrypt the card number before inserting it into the database. By doing this, CockroachDB never sees decrypted data for that column. And depending on the industry you work in, finance, banking, healthcare, etc., that might be a hard requirement on you. And I return the ID of the newly created customer, and I'll use that to perform a checkout, where I'll decrypt the card number and simply print it out to the console just to prove that I've been able to access the card details. I'll start the server. I'll register a customer. And I'll make a payment. Notice over here that we'll print out the plain text equivalent of the ciphertext card number. The new suite of cryptographic tools that exist within CockroachDB 23.2 will make it easier for you to satisfy regulatory requirements that might exist within your industry. When deciding between the encrypt and encrypt with an initialization vector functions, for security, I would recommend using the initialization variant of that function. But if minimizing storage is a requirement for you, the same can be performed without an initialization vector, although this isn't as secure. 